Let's rank the Star Wars movies from 1 to 11. All the live action Star Wars movies that have been released. So, 11 and 10, I kind of, I basically have the same issues. So I'll tell you why I put one over the other. Number 11, I have The Phantom Menace. Now, I feel like all the prequels, they all suffer from pretty much the same issues. Whether it be the dialogue, the over the top acting, how cartoonish they are and look at times, the terrible effects. It's just a complete mess. I also feel like they kind of just shit on everything that the original trilogy set up. So, the reason I have Phantom Menace at 11 is because, well, I mean, there's nothing really good about it. I'd say the best thing about the Phantom Menace is Darth Maul's fight at the very end. But I can't really count a 5-10 minute sequence as, you know, something more than what it is. The only reason I have a second of the clone tire is because, well, I don't I don't know, because you got to see Natalie Portman in a hot outfit. That's basically it. Besides that, these both these movies suffer from the same problems. Just terrible films. Absolutely terrible. Speaking of terrible, let's talk about The Last Jedi. Oh boy. That's a fun movie to discuss. Star Wars The Last Jedi. This is a very controversial film. There's a lot of people that like it. There's a lot of people that will defend it. And there's also a lot of people that swear it's the worst movie ever created. Uh, I think The Last Jedi has great visuals, and I think, I guess, the best part about it is Rey and Kylo Ren. But besides that, the rest of the movie is just pretty fucking boring. Like, they completely shit all over Luke Skywalker and his entire character. Doesn't even feel like the same person anymore. Just wipe their complete, just wipe their fucking ass with Luke Skywalker. And then you got this pink-haired bitch that's Makes absolutely no sense she won't tell Poe the plan. Like, really, why would she not tell Poe the plan? It makes no sense at all. And then you also got all this boring shit with Finn and Rose. I guess it's supposed to be setting up their relationship, even though they have no chemistry at all, and we don't even know anything about these characters, because they barely set him up or done anything with him since The Force Awakens. So yeah, there's that problem. It's just a very boring film. It's just lots of, feels like, propaganda bullshit. All this feminism shit all over the film. Characters wearing a bunch of ugly outfits. And just... So it's not a very entertaining film. There's barely even any action in it. This does not even feel like a Star Wars movie, to be honest with you. It's just riddled with problems. Like I said, the best part is just the cinematography. Really. And I guess the stuff with Rey was okay. Was And Kylo Ren. It, was just, it wasn't complete shit. So that's the only reason it's above the, those two prequels. Then, number eight, I got Solo. It's a pretty forgettable film, but I guess it was alright. I mean, Lando really stole the movie from Han Solo, so I'd like to see, I'd rather see a movie about Donald Glover's Lando more than I care about Han Solo, because, like, the best part about Han Solo is that you don't know anything about him. We don't need a Han Solo movie. It's just Disney trying to cash in on Star Wars like they've always tried to do. But, yeah, Solo... Uh, it's, it's pretty forgettable. You'll forget about it about a couple of days after you see the movie in theaters for the first time. Uh, Rogue One. The best part about this movie is the third act. Besides that, the rest of it's kind of a drag. Yeah, I like how it kind of feels like it fits within the original Star Wars movies. It actually feels like a movie that could take place in the same setting as the original trilogy. So I'll give it props there, but besides that, I honestly didn't find the movie that entertaining. Mostly because you don't really care about the characters. You know, they're all just, like, flat. And I never found any reason to care about the characters. It's just... Yawn the entire movie. The only entertaining part was when they all die at the end. Number six. This is going to surprise a lot of people. Rise of Skywalker. I actually don't hate this movie. Like everybody else does. I thought it was a fine, a fine movie. You know, I wasn't really expecting... The greatest thing in the world, because that's never really been what Star Wars is. It's never been the greatest complex thing in the entire world or anything like that. So, I get over some of the dumb shit, like how Palpatine just kind of pops out of nowhere. You know, it's like dumb shit in the movie. It's still not a very, not, not a great movie, but it's better than a lot of other Star Wars movies we get, in my opinion. Please keep in mind, these are my opinions. My favorite parts of Rise of Skywalker would have to be the action. That's something I really found entertaining with the movie. Um, let's see. Number five, I'd go with Revenge of the Sith. 
I mean, yeah, it's definitely the best prequel. A lot of people love this movie to death. Like, this is a lot of people's favorite Star Wars movie. And, um, it's, it's, it's still got some of the same issues as the other prequel movies, you know, it's just laughable at times. It's hard to take it seriously because of how over the top the acting is and the dialogue is just completely terrible. But I guess I got a little more into it emotionally with Anakin's turn to the dark side. Sure, it feels a little sudden, but you still bought everything because of the relationship they set up with um, Anakin and Natalie Portman. I can't remember her character's name right now. Padme? I mean, they didn't do a good job at setting it up, but they had no chemistry at all. But still, with the two movies they wasted setting this up, it kind of paid off here. I think the action was went on a little bit too long with Obi-Wan and Anakin, but besides that, you know, Obi-Wan and Anakin stuff worked pretty well in this movie. Number four, Return of the Jedi. It's my least favorite of the original trilogy. It's kind of goofy and just, uh, uh, I mean, it's just whatever. The best part is definitely the ending. Besides that, I just don't really care for anything else that happens, to be honest with you. I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan in the entire world, but I do enjoy the live-action movies. Um, number three. Yeah, number three is... The Force Awakens. I actually didn't mind this movie all that much. A lot of people like to shit on it because apparently it's the cool thing to do to shit on the sequels. Uh, but I didn't mind The Force Awakens. I thought it was a pretty good movie that blended the old cast with the new cast very well. It had entertaining action, you know, entertaining good, good characters for the most part. And regardless of how badly they used Finn in the rest of the movies, he was actually pretty good in this movie. He actually had a character. He had an arc, you know. So I thought it was pretty enjoyable. I really felt like they captured the Star Wars, the Star Wars magic again, regardless of what all the other fanboys say. In my opinion, Star Wars is The Force Awakens was a pretty good movie. And then number two, A New Hope. This movie is iconic to cinema. We all know why. It's got great characters, a great villain. It's just some, it's got that Star Wars magic. It's, this is what set it all up. It's just an amazing movie. Sure, it's a little bit outdated, but I mean, considering when it came out, it's not, it doesn't look that bad. It still holds up pretty well today. And of course, my number one Star Wars movie of all time would have to be The Empire Strikes Back. Nothing to top this movie. It's definitely enjoyable. You can rewatch this movie pretty much whenever you want to. It just flows through. The pacing's sharp, you know, they up everything from the first movie and make it much more entertaining. This is one of the best sequels ever made. That's undeniable. It stood the test of time. I mean, look how long ago this movie came out and people still talk about it to this day. It's still a relevant movie to this day. It's just amazing and incredible what they've done with this movie. But yeah, that's my uh, top 11 Star Wars movies. I highly doubt they're ever going to make anything on top of The Empire Strikes Back.